In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Good evening. So we're going to continue our, our, our study in 1 Corinthians. As you remember, uh, last week we, we studied 1 Corinthians 12, and St. Paul was talking to us about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and what happened was in the church of Corinth, they had the gift, they had the tongues, but they misused it. So here, it's, he's in the middle of talking about these gifts. So 1 Corinthians 12, which we studied last week. And then uh, he's going he's to talk about the same thing, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. But the interesting part is in the midst of talking about the gifts, he, he squeezes in 1 Corinthians 13. I hope that all of us, knows the chapter of first corinthians 13. so when i meet with premarital counseling this first corinthians 13 is their homework in their honeymoon that every day they read it one per, what the husband read it one day the second day the wife reads it and that's like their so it's a short chapter but he squeezes he's talking about the gifts of the holy spirit and he squeezes first corinthians 13. first corinthians 13 is the 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 the, the chapter about love so let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, to remind you the last verse of 1 Corinthians 12, that he told them that there's a lot of gifts. People you know, in the church had a lot of gifts. Uh, you know, the, the, there's some apostles, some prophets, some teachers, some that are miracle workers, some have the gifts of healing. And we talked about the gift of helps. Remember that? And it's saying there's a lot of uh, people that need help and there's a gift of help. And then the gift of administration and then the gift of varieties of tongue and then he said these are all gifts but then he ends the chapter right before first corinthians 13 he tells them yet i show you a more excellent way he's going to talk to them yes all these gifts are important but there is something there is more excellent and this is when he's going to focus on first corinthians 13 about the chapter of love and the love that he's talking about in 1 Corinthians 13, it's not the phileo or, or, or any of the other types of love, it's the agape love. The agape love, it's basically a love that is this, it's something that is, a, is an act of a will. It's not an act of an emotion, no, it's a willing love. And not only a, an act of the will, but it's also an unconditional type of love. This is the same type of love that God loved humanity, loved us and gave himself. So it's the agape love that he's talking about in 1 Corinthians 13. It's a small chapter, we'll go through it. But just to remind you, uh, the first three verses, he's going to emphasize on the importance of love. And then verse 4 to 8, he's going to talk about the definition of love. What is love and what it does? So what is love and what it does? And by the way, I have to remind you that he's not going to talk about anywhere here emotions. It's always going to be acts of decision. It's going to be things that we do. Definition of love and by what it, what it is and what it does. And then in the end of the chapter, he's going to talk about uh, the, the quality of the, the, the love quality of permanence. In other words, love is permanent, the permanency of love. And he's going to compare it to all the other gifts like the gifts of teacher, prophet, miracle workers. And he's going to conclude that all these gifts, speaking in tongues and gifts of healing and, and all these gifts, these are all temporary, but the gift of love, that's going to last forever because God is love. So this is in general what the chapter is. So the issue in the church of Corinth, they had the gift of speaking in tongues, but they were misusing it. So he starts out in 1 Corinthians 13. He says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. In other words, he's telling them, that if I have the gift of tongues, and I'm speaking in tongues in the church, and, and not only that, but speaking the language of men and the language of the angels, the language of the heavenly. If I have all these gifts, and I have not love, it's all fake. It's all like brass or clanging cymbal. It's hollow inside, a cymbal like the deaf. It would make a noise, but it's hollow inside. So he's saying that if I do have this, this, the, the tongue to speak as in, the, in the heavenly language, and I don't have love, it's nothing. And then in verse 2, he says, And though I have the gift of prophecy, 
If I can basically say the message of the Lord and understand all mysteries, the mystery of man and the mystery of the divine and all the knowledge, we talked about the knowledge in, uh, last week, and though I have all faith, remember we talked about two types of faith, there is the faith of the virtue uh, and, 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 and the, the gift faith. And he's saying that he's talking here about the gift, not the virtue. The gift of faith that moves mountains. He says that if I have the, the, the all faith so that I could move, remove mountains and have not love, it's nothing. And then in verse 3, he goes on and he's going deeper in it. It says, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor. So I'm giving everything that I own to feed the poor. And though I give my body to be burned. In other words, I'm in the service night and day and I'm giving my body. But have not love, it's nothing. It profits me nothing. It's empty and it's useless and it's profitless. So this, he's basically, he's now he's telling them the emph, you know, how important love is. Okay? And then in verse 4, he's going to talk about the definition of what, uh, you know, what it is, what, is, what love is and what it does to us. So he starts out by describing love, that love suffers long and is kind. In other words, there is patience, there is an element of patience. It doesn't give up on the other person really fast. It suffers long. It waits and it's patient on the other, on the other person. And it's kind to the other person, merciful to the other person. Love does not envy. In other words, love does not look at, is not jealous of what the others have, but is content and, and, and with what, the, what, what he has. So the love is, is a simple eye, not always looking at this person have this, this person have that. But love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. When it says parade itself, that means it puts itself in display. Love does not put himself in display. You, know, you, you just basically want the people to look at you and, and, and no, it does not place, it's, it does not parade itself. Is not puffed up, is not arrogant, is not proud. So love is not all of these things. Love also does not behave rudely. In other words, uh, it, it does not, it is not mean spiritedly or insults other. It does not behave rude to other people. It does not seek its own. In the, sec in the sense is, it doesn't always get its way, but it always looks for, well, what can I do for, the, for you? It's not pushy, in other words. It doesn't always push its needs on the other, but does not seek its own. Is not provoked. In other words, it's not angered easily. When someone loves the other, is very patient and is not provoked, thinks no evil. In other words, it does not keep score. You did this, I'm going to do this, and I'm in a reciprocating back and forth. It does not keep score. So in other words, it does not think evil. Where is it? Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity. In other words, it does not take pleasure when someone else's fall or someone else's sin does not rejoice in the other person falling and sinning. But, so these are all the things that love is not. And then he's going to go on and he's going to describe what love is. What love is. Love, he says, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, it's not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but... What does it do? It rejoices in the truth. It's joyful in the righteousness when the truth of the, uh, is prevailed. It bears all things. In other words, it's able to, to take uh, you know, pressure from the others, but, and it bears it, and it bears it lovingly. Uh, and it's not, it doesn't feel burdensome. Like when married couple are asking each other, it does not feel like a burden. It bears all things believes all things. In other words, it trusts in God no matter what happened. It believes all things. It hopes all things and endures all things. In other words, it will endure no matter what happened. It puts up with everything. Uh, it does not wear out. 
This is one of the things that St. John Chrysostom says, it does not wear out. It puts up with everything. But love, it never fails. The only thing love cannot do is fail. It does not fail. It cannot fail. And this is what it starts out with verse 8. Love never fails. And then he's going he's gonna to compare all these other gifts that he spoke about in the last chapter. And he's going to compare it to love. And he says, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. In other words, at one point in the early church, people prophesied. But they don't, we don't have the gift of prophecy anymore. The church when early on, there was gift of prophecies. And there was a gift of uh, a lot of other gifts, but we don't have the gift of tongue. We don't have the gift of tongue anymore. Now everybody is able to speak the other languages and they're preaching. So he's saying here, there's something about these uh, other gifts. They're not permanent. Whether there are prophecy, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, the gift of tongues, they will cease. In other words, like we see in the church, there is no gift of tongues. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. There will come in a time where the knowledge is not going to be the, the, the need. There's going to be bigger things. For we know in part, and now he's going to talk about knowledge, and how we, knowledge, we see things. In verse 9 it says, For we know in part, so whatever we see now, it's very small, it's limited, uh, and it's incomplete. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. In other words, when we're perfected at the end, uh, in eternal life, this gift of prophecy is not going to be needed. Uh, all the other gifts are not going to be needed. There's not going to be permanence, just like that some of the gifts we don't have today in, our, in the church, because the church no longer needs it. And then he goes on in verse 11, it says, When I was a child... I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. And the same thing when we grow and, and we, are, we enter into eternity, all the things that we uh, as humans will need, it's not going to be necessarily anymore, but there are some things that are going to last forever. And he's going to close it and it's going to say, he's going he's to basically close that the things that will last forever is only love. It's not going to be the prophecy or all the other gifts. And then in verse 12, he says, for now we see in a mirror dimly. In other words, we see things, but we see things in a dim way. We don't see the whole picture. Uh, uh, right now, things are dim. But after, when we enter eternity, we will be face to face, face to face with the Lord that we no longer going to need the faith or trust or hope. Any of these things are not going to be necessary anymore because why would you need faith if God is, is face to face with you? Why would you need hope if you are into eternal life and you see you're with Him? There's nothing to hope for. You're with Him already. So here he's, he's describing that all these things are just basically mirror, it's, we're looking in the mirror dimly, but then it's going to come a time where we're going to be face to face. And then he goes on, he says, Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. In eternity, I will know just as I am also known. So I will see things clearly. I will see the Lord face to face. And in verse 13, he closes the chapter, he says, And now abide faith, hope, Love. So here he's giving them the three things that we really need for salvation. We need to have faith, we need to have hope, we need to have love. These three are necessary for salvation. But the greatest of these is love. Why? Because faith and hope in eternal life, there is not going to be need. There's not going to be need for faith or hope. The only thing that is going to last is love. So he closes the chapter of telling them, that the most important virtue or gift is love. So don't think too much if you're speaking in tongues or prophesying or all the knowledge. Use these gifts for the, for the, for the glory of God, but don't misuse them. But he's trying to tell them that in spite of all these gifts, yes, it, these are important, but the one that is more excellent, which like how he closed 1 Corinthians 12, the more excellent way is love. Because love will live forever. This is what we will have that relationship with God forever. 
just like we, you know, if you look like we talked about in, in if you use, if you do math with association, if we say God is love, God is infinite. If God is infinite and God is love, then by association, love is also infinite. In the sense that we will spend eternal life in love with Him and as, as we progress, we get deeper and deeper and it's never monotonous. It, we get deeper and deeper uh, in love with Him. So here in 1 Corinthians 13 is basically describing what love is not, what love is, and, and how that love is one of is the, the biggest, the, the greatest uh, gift and the greatest virtue that we all ought to have and live by. Anyone have any questions? It's a good chapter, short chapter. I encourage you to memorize it. <laughs> I encourage you that if you're married, read it often. I encourage you, if you when you go to your honeymoon, you read it often. Uh, and it's a good chapter and it's uh, something that, uh, you know, a lot of times when you see actually on walls, they would, they would write a lot of verses from this chapter. Love never fails. Love the, like, so it's, it's, it's a very important chapter that we you know. It's really short and I encourage you to read it. Any, anyone have any questions? No questions? And glory be to God forever. Amen. And make us worthy, O Lord, to pray thanks for our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil. In Christ Jesus our Lord, thine is the kingdom, power, and glory forever. Amen. Now the love of God the Father, the grace of His only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ, communion and gift of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you.